this is the drain pipe for the water heater pressure relief valve. I say pressure relief because it's a tankless water heater. And we haven't installed the turf yet, but I can see how low the lawn sprinkler heads are. So it's higher than six inches from the ground today, which is too high. And it's likely to be higher than six inches from the ground tomorrow. Okay. Up here we have the exhaust for the water heater. And this is the thimble, and the thimble is supposed to be sealed next to the wall to help keep water from getting in. You think water can get in there? I think water can get in there. So the thimble hasn't been sealed. Now we're going along. Home face is east. Okay, so we're going along the north wall. It's the garage north exterior wall. And we're moving in. We, we come to the buffet. We come to the buffet, but we're here at the water heater now. That's what we're that's what we're talking about. And we got a little insulation on our piping here. Okay, so just a little bit of insulation on the pipe. Now we got it clear. So we've got a tankless water heater. This is our thermostat. Water shouldn't be higher than 120 degrees. We have a care and use manual, which is really, really good. Because you and the builder are gonna to want to read this together here real soon okay so we've got a tankless water heater one thing we don't have if you'll notice it being in the garage is we should have a baluster something to protect the water heater from vehicular damage so that's what we're supposed to have i didn't make up the rules i did not make up the rules so we're coming on along here let's go in for our gas coming through our gas piping should be sealed around the wall there a little bit. We do have a nice little drip leg here. And we go up underneath here and up. Oh, what's that? You see that red tape right there? The gas valve has not been adjusted. It's kind of like spark plugs. Yes, did they bolt it in? Yeah, they bolted it in. All right. Did they turn it on? Yeah, it seems to be turned on. Is it getting hot water? I was getting hot water in the house. So it works. I get that. But this is supposed to be taken off and adjusted, dialed in. The, the manufacturer knows about how much gas pressure comes to a residential house, but the manufacturer also says, take that red tape off, put a manometer on it, and adjust it to get your most efficiency out of it. Okay, you paid a lot of extra money, and you're financing it for that matter, you paid a lot of extra money for this, why don't you want to get every penny out of it you can? And, and since I'm down here, okay, since I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead. This screen right here needs to be cleaned out once a year. This is a Maserati. Okay, this is a Lamborghini. This is a sports car. This is not a Ford Fiero. This is supposed to be cleaned once a year. That's the difference between this being a four or five year water heater and a 15 year water heater. I'm not saying that if you clean it once a year, you'll get 15 years. And I'm not saying if you don't clean it, you won't get 15 years. But if your objective is to get 15 years out of this, you're going to come a long way towards achieving your objective with some routine maintenance. This is more important than on a conventional water heater because it's so cantankerous. It's such a, it's such a, 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 an exotic sports car, if you will. So, so that's what we got. That's what we got. While I'm down here, this is not your temperature pressure relief valve. This is your pressure relief valve. And since it's just pressure, it does not have to be insulated. I'm going to go ahead and pop this. We'll see. I'm going to make a mess. All right, and then we got the right type of piping. Almost the right type of piping. One, two, three, four. Okay, maybe we don't have less than five bins. But code says that you're supposed to have a vacuum breaker in the same room as the water heater. So this pipe is supposed to have a vacuum breaker on. We don't have a vacuum breaker on it, and it terminates too high. If we put a vacuum breaker on it, that's going to kind of make a mess, isn't it? Well, then we should have a safety pan. You don't have to have safety pans on tankless water heaters. Well, the easiest way to meet the code and cheapest way, so why don't I just do it the easiest and cheapest way? Is there any reason to argue with that? Let's do it the easiest and cheapest way. Let's not do it a stupid way, all right? Put your piping into your deep pan. Have your deep pan here, and it goes out the wall. Everything's fixed for a couple bucks. There's no... And spend hours and hours arguing about it. I'm going to have the phone call. I'm going to have the phone call. I'm going to have another phone call. Three phone calls. I'm just saying, man. Just do it right. That's, that's not a big deal. It's pretty easy, huh? Just do it right. You know why you need that safety pan? Not just for this. Look up here. You see that little nozzle right there? You know, it's got a purpose. It has a purpose in life. This is a high-efficiency water heater. 
okay? It extracts all the heat out of the gas. It extracts all the heat and puts it into the water instead of the air. Yes, carbon monoxide comes out of here. Yes, your exhaust comes out of here. Yes, all the things you don't want to breathe in your house come out of here. But not much heat, not much heat comes out of here. Not much heat comes out of here. All right, you know why? Because the condensate comes down here and it goes out this drain. Oh, you don't have a drain. Well, if you don't have a drain, where does the condensate go? It goes down onto your heat exchanger. Comes inside here, it corrodes the whole darn thing. No, read the instructions. It's in the instructions. The instructions say that you need you need a sediment trap right there, a condensate to take the acid. And by the way, it's going to be this condensate acidic. That's why it, that's why it does so much damage inside. It's not just water. We're not we're not distilling water. You can't put it you can't put it in your um, CPAP machine or something. To, to, no, no, it's highly acidic. So you should have a neutralizing filter on that. This pipe should have a loop, a neutralizing filter, if necessary, I think is what the um, instructions say, but this goes out to your yard. It goes out to your yard. We just came from your yard. That's where it goes. If you want the acidic water on your yard, you don't need a neutralizing filter, I guess. I don't know. I just put that stuff in the ground. You don't have to mow it that way. All right, so you're supposed to have a hose with a loop. Goes down to an air vacuum breaker. Oh, just like this it is supposed to have an air vacuum breaker. It's supposed to have an air vacuum breaker here. And here for the hose you don't have, where are they going to go? They're going to go in the safety pan that you don't have. Safety pan will help you do all this. We're not talking about a fortune here. It's not a king's ransom. There's a sick To do it right? To do it right. Is that what we want to do? Does everybody want to do it right? It's a good question.